When did they start growing Baronia? Oh, now. Over at Como, while we were living at Como, oh, we used to do a hundred of dozens over at Como, quite early in the piece. Uncle, I think, I think Uncle Alf was one of the first. He had a violet patch out towards where Don's, you know, where John's things are now. I think it's all built in now. Oh, must be John's new house, must be on where his old violet patch went. He used to get our kids out there and uh, get us picking bunches of violet and cold frosty mornings. Auntie oh, Ed and your mother and I used to go out and help him. No, no, he used to send them to market. He had a big pile of patch there for a time, but that was Uncle Alf's own. But some of them claim that Uncle Alf was the first to grow baronia. Well, if you say that to Clary Chandler, he goes as mad as a hornet because he declares he wasn't. <laughs> I think really Uncle Alf might have played a bit of part in it, but I think it was really grown first at Gomo, the baronia, as far as I know. But Clary says he's, he can remember his father telling him that he used to go to market with the Baronia when he was on the place. Well, that was a long time before. I can't remember that, but I can remember the Baronia patch. But who marketed it, I wouldn't say. Where did they take it to market? Oh, to the Victoria market, the old Victoria market. And they used to have auction sales every week through the winter season of plants. I oh, know your grandma, no, it wasn't her, she was married then, Auntie Ed and I. We used to get up in the morning, get the boys breakfast about three o'clock, and they used to drive in with a pair of horses and a wagon and take in the plants, and they used to have auction sales at Beecham's old auction rooms in Collins Street. We used to get up and make them barrels of, you know, bottles of tea and wrap them up in all sorts of things to keep them warm. Uncle Bert and Uncle Rafe used to go off the market and we'd sit on by the big old fireplace. And, oh, it was a shame that old house was pulled down, you know. It should have been kept. Every brick in it was made on the place, you know, because they said the bricks were deteriorating. They were all going soft because they thought the bricks don't stand up to the weather. And that old water hole up at the back behind all the sheds, that's where all the mud came from for the bricks that Gamma was built out of. They were all handmade bricks. And a man named, I think his name was Ack or Rick or some name like that, he built the house. Of course, that was when Uncle Rafe was a baby. They moved up into that old house when Uncle Rafe was a baby. So it was pretty old. And right up the back on the old veranda, the parson, the old Reverend Walton was standing in a real good photo of um, Mr. Walton up there, he married them. At the old? At the old home, uh, Como. And that's where the, I don't know that the veranda steps had been cemented and all made nice then, because it was an awful old brick floored veranda and the bricks were handmade, you know, and that was soft and was awful thing to keep clean. But they got it all tiled with good tiles. And they had these lovely cement steps there. And that's the one thing I believe that Fergus has saved out of the old home. He kept the steps and he's got them now. They were in a position where they could lead the path down to his. Mel told me that. Lal was over there and Fergus showed them round and said he saved all that. And Lal said to him, Oh, Fergus, uh, well, John. What did you do with all the iron lace work around the other end? He said, look, Lal, I tried to save some of it. It fell to pieces when you touched it. It was that rusty. Of course, it had been kept painted. Mm. But all was pretty.